So oh. whilst everybody's joining, every, yes. everybody is joining. Um, uh, I'm going to go through a couple of posts on the uh, um, uh, Phoenix group before I went to work today. Yeah. And I left work at eight. I got back at seven after going doing shopping and then had to really scram some tea down then I had to load my car because I got to leave at half past five tomorrow morning and now I'm sat here waiting to see our phoenix warriors <laughs> oh because oh because you you had to get it all crammed in so you could do this this yes. evening See, I don't think it was I my don't... today's challenge. <laughs> yes, that's that was your today's challenge. Oh, let me get I, you might not be able to hear me actually because I've just realized I haven't oh, my mic. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Hello, sorry, I, I forgot to bring my camera at uh, my camera, my um microphone. Oh, it's, it's not behaving. <laughs> Go <Came> down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss it. So, uh... the bishop. Sarah's here. Hello, Sarah. Good to see you Hi, again. Vivian's here. Hello. Hi, Vivian. Pia's here. Pia and Nelly. Hello, hello. Hi, Libby's here. Hello. Hi, Libby. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, <laughs> wasn't last night a show? Goodness, didn't we have a show last night when we talked about poor old P3? Sarah says, I've sent an invite to my friend who is in dire need of help. I hope she joins. Well, if you've sent an invite, Sarah, we see those invites come up. Um, if they, if people are invited by uh, group members, then we just automatically let them in. So hopefully what will happen is she, her her feed will start populating with, with posts. So she'll be like, oh, what's this? Louise says, hello, I'm home early for a change. Hello, Louise. What have you been up to today then? Sandra's here. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Good Sandra. to see you. Melissa's here. Hello, Melissa. Vanya's here. Hello, Vanya. That's at least, at least I've counted one, two, three. Three. Grace four. isn't here this evening. Great. Three of our, four of our four. students have joined us tonight so far. Ashley's here. Hello, Ashley. How stumpy. How's, how's little stumpy? Becky Bragg's here. Hi, all. Hi, Becky. Hi, so, Becky. yes, last night, I don't know if a lot of people who are here tonight will have seen last night, but for those that haven't, go back and watch it because you can forward it to the juicy bits because we were talking about osteonecrosis we were talking about that and and uh in fact we've had some posts or had a post come up in the in the phoenix group which we'll we'll talk about in a minute but we're not going to we'll, we'll we'll tell you what we're going to do about that in a minute um oh oh no, that's not so good louise no whoever uh, it was i hope you gave him a good send-off yes i hope you did Stumpy is good. Brilliant. Trisha's here. Hi, Trisha. Hope Hi, Trish. all's going well. Hi, Hope 10 days going well. Hope all is going well. Did you remember to reply to Trisha last night? No. <gasps> I've just remembered seeing her name. Oh, it's so bad. It's so but the bad. thing is, it's not like we've got a lot to do. We did After try, our business we're, meeting we're... last night, which, oh, yeah. ended, which ended at midnight, I completely forgot. Did it? Did we talk? Did we talk we till, midnight? till midnight? Yes, Good we did. Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. Hi, Dawn. Lovely to see you. Hello, hello. Uh, morning from New Zealand. Yesterday's live on Degeneration was gold. Thank you so much. If that's Jenny, Jenny's watched it twice already. Or maybe even three <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> and she's telling everybody else to watch it. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Hi, you're here. Good. Because we're going to talk about you. Remember, we've got to talk about Deborah's post this evening, Gary. Yes. Trish goes, lol. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Trish. Me. Or Trisha. Um, Do you mind if I call you Trish? I, I used to have a lady that I called Trish, and it, it'll be habit. <laughs> Hi, I don't know who I'm saying hi to because your avatar's not showing. Hi, from Croatia. Thank you for your marvellous work. You are very welcome. Very, uh, very, very welcome. Elisabetta. Yes, it's me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Deborah says, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Because you can add you can add a little bit of stuff to it as well as we go through. So that'll be fine. Uh, Trish is fine, she says. There you go. Marvellous. All right. So we're not going to stay on famous last words. We're not going to stay on as long as we did last night because we were on for an hour and a half. And we've been neglectful with our going in and doing comments because we've been doing lots and lots of other things. So tonight we thought we would uh, go go down some of the Phoenix posts and chat about those as well as Deborah's one. So watching from Ireland. Hello, Joe. How's the donkey? How's Ed the donkey? See, I do remember some things. Only a few things. I don't remember all, but I remember some things. All right. Now I'm going to get onto the Phoenix group so I can share a mass screen. Um, let's have a quick look here. Present share screen. There. Can you I see? A little update from um, Alison as well. Yeah. If you scroll down just past us. Oh, that's us. Hello. Hello, us. <laughs> Hello, us. <laughs> Quick, get past that. Quick. Oh, look. Can't There's make Rosie the and Alison's granddaughter, Jessie. That's Rosie, who we were talking about last yes, night, folks. Yes, yes, yes. Can't make the live tonight, but I thought those who tuned in last night might like to see Rosie doing what she does best today. My miracle pony and my granddaughter. Oh, that needs a big love. Aww. Are they cute? <laughs> Isn't that so lovely? Both of them together. And great feet there, Rosie. Great feet. Oh, look, she's got some nice little comments. That's lovely. Okay. Lovely, lovely. Monica. Uh, oh, hello, Lindsay and Gary. Can you see all this, by the way? Because I'm not looking can't at really it. can't really see it. You'll have to read it out. Okay. I'm going to make it bigger. Oh, that's better. Can you see it now? Yep. Hello, Lindsay and Gary and HMT team. I've finished my 15-day challenge. It was very helpful and amazing. And now I'm looking forward to the 10-day. How or why? How, how or where? I find the link, please. I'm looking forward to the next learning. Uh, um, <laughs> have you purchased it i don't know i if you're watching i will go and have a look because that's there's two answers to that one if you haven't purchased it you should be getting a link in an email two if you have purchased it you should be getting another link in the email which opens up that but i will check that after the live because uh i'm not i'm not sure where we are with that and if you're not <clears> watching <throat> then i don't know so i will go and check that after the live don't you worry uh jenny says you will love it the 10 day challenge i'm up to day five get on very good oh there's me waxing lyrical uh on day seven i um, haven't actually listened to that one how can I'm you talk to, your, talk to I'm yourself the... for 27 minutes <laughs> ah, how in the hell no wonder we go on for an hour and a half every night. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 though. Look, look, look who we see. Dee -dee -dee. Hold oh, on. am I going to see my boy? Go on. Oh, go on. Shut up, Lindsay. Go away now. Why can't I find it? Come here. Oh. Mm. Oh, there's Daisy. Oh, there she is. Oh, is that my 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 lovely mare? Yeah. Is that Broom or is it Carmen? It's Carmen. Oh. <laughs> Look at um, the uh, oh, she and, comes and 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 Casimir. Yeah. So so I talk about uh, oh Lily. Oh, there's, there's Lily. Lily looking dirty. That's Lily. Uh, yeah. So we talk about animals. We talk about salt licks. We talk about putting salt in your feed. There she is. Look. Licking salt. So for those of you who have been told that horses need salt put in their feed buckets and that they won't lick salt, you have a good look at what she's doing. Look at how she licks both on the front of her tongue and occasionally she'll do a little lick on the back of her tongue. She is more than capable of getting what she needs from that salt block. Uh, and how and uh, oh stop no. on a science oh, degree I don't know in how. biology oh so I know all about new stop there 
<laughs> so yeah the thing is um that this whole salt debate it it sort of it is a little bit worrying because far far too many people nowadays are putting they don't know how much they need to give their horse salt it's far better to live your your own horse to dose themselves isn't it gary because Very they so. know what they need <clears throat> What we've got to think about here is that um, most substances, if it is uh, ingested um, in any great quantity that is not needed, it can be toxic. Oh. So, yes. um, so, and and let's face Sorry. it. Sorry. T salt is very toxic. Yes, it's it's needed as well, but in excess can be very toxic. So, yes, please don't make your horse eat salt. Please don't. It, it, they know how to get hold of it. And we've actually got a couple of horses that if they want more, they'll actually use their teeth on the block to get more. Mm -hmm. um, and they make this nice grinding noise. <laughs> um, but I have to say that out of all of our herd, I think there's about two that do it. The rest just stand there and lick and they get a top up yeah that's it hmm. that's all they yeah. need don't 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 be overdoing it you must and some we don't actually see at the salt lick at all no so it is be... very much a personal thing so please don't and I... let's not go into great detail but the research that started all of this off is not substantial in any way shape or form for the domestic horse absolutely not so please don't do it no and uh i go into will horses survive on just meadow hay alone you're giving the right oh. environment without supplements i go into that and you get to see our horses all be a bit muddy but you get to see how good they look and that is all they get is mixed meadow hay we don't we don't give them anything extra at all nothing and look at them thriving they're all thriving and they're all sound so uh monica said melissa says um the sound went out in the video when i watched it well it, i i think if you watch it you can see it in the phoenix page or on the hm page and you can it looks like it's working now all the way through um hi from wales love this group and these live chats what is the salt lick you are using and does it have vitamins and minerals in it yes so we say salt lick but we mean a salt stroke mineral block. Uh, I use um, a salt block called, hang on a minute. I use a salt block called KN in France called KNZ Universal, which is just a general salt mineral block, but you can get them from most agricultural suppliers that their mineral blocks they give to their cows, etc. cetera. Um, just be careful, you know, what's in it because it's got copper in it that's not good for sheep so you have to be very careful what's in well not very careful but it should say on the label and you yeah you just stick it in the field that's a 25 that one that you saw there is a 25 kilo one uh knz universal hang on a minute universal this is a bit of an advert shouldn't do this really i suppose KNZ Universal, where are you? Where are you? I can't find it. Let's see if I can see. Uh, yes, I have found it. KNZ. So this, these, these are the people that we get it from. But I'm pretty sure that unless you are where we are, th these are in the Netherlands. These people. It's probably and this... a European supplier. Um, I don't think there's. Uh, I don't think anybody's found where you you can get it in the UK. No, so this is this is this is what we use, and um, and the one I use is that one, KNZ Universal, uh, ideal addition to the basic ration of or TMR. In addition to salt and magnesium, it contains the essential trace elements: magnesium, zinc, copper, iodine, and selenium. Everybody goes on about selenium. Salt is an essential mineral, among other things. It maintains good acid and fluid balance. It also plays an important role in the functioning of the central nervous system and muscular contraction 
Moreover, KNZ salt supports the intestinal flora, which results in better digestion. And selenium, selenium, as we know, is a coenzyme, and so it helps enzymes work. So that is what we use, but something along those lines is absolutely fine, and they will do their own thing. Thank you very much. People that tell you that they won't, I think Daisy just proved, proved that point. <laughs> she stayed there for at least a good two minutes I think and away she went um and the thing is you know I, I just just talk to carry on with that and what Gary was saying very few people have the nerve actually to do what we do in respect of just cutting it all out and it isn't worrying because you know you can always add it in if you leave, but we always say leave it six months. And I'm not talking about obviously salt, but I'm talking about the bag feeds, the supplements, etc. Take them out because most horses are suffering from hypernutrition and hyper supplementation, toxicity rather than going that way. Or you're just putting stuff into them that they're just going to pee back out again and wasting your money. So it's getting the, ba the base, the, the, the good cornerstone of their diet, which is hay that's their cornerstone that's the fiber the cornerstone of their diet everything else is a feed additive everything else is a feed additive and you have to strip it back we've got too many horses suffering as you well know in this in the phoenix group that's what we see all the time and you you have to strip it back and then once you've done that you've done that for six months then and only then can you assess to see if your horse is is struggling uh, or needing something, and 99.9 .9 times out of 10, 100, <laughs> it, you don't find that horses struggle. You saw, um, if you watch that live, you'll see that Carmen is a big, is Gary's horse, and she's a big uh, warm blood cross Clydesdale, and does she look un unhealthy? No, she looks absolutely fine, got a lovely fluffy coat. She's, she's a big herbivore, and she survives on mixed meadow hay alone, that salt mineral block, and at any little bit she can nibble around from the head hedges or if there's some shoots coming up now and again through, which she doesn't really bother with, but if she does around the tracks. And, you know, absolutely fine. Water, rainwater, they drink rainwater um, most of the time. In the summer, obviously, they have to drink water from our mains which isn't so brilliant, but that's what they have to do. And they're all fine, healthy and good. None of them are underweight. The only time we ever have underweight horses is if we take on a horse that is very sick or old, if a horse gets older, because naturally they start to lose weight as they get older. Uh, and it's not such a bad thing either, you know, because their joints are getting more wear and tear as, uh, by the time they've got quite old and they don't want to be carrying a load of weight on top. So it's all about not being uh, precious about it or paranoid about it. It's all about going, well, let's see. We've got this mixed meadow hay. That's what they were designed. They were designed to just live off bits of fibre that they find around and uh, just go and see what happens. Save yourself a bunch of money basically. Thank you so much. Big thumbs up. Uh, is the Himalaya salt because, good because I hear different ideas rich in iron? Again, again, we do use Himalayan salt sometimes. We, we got given a load, didn't we? And we it just is, chuck yeah. that, we chuck that in the field and we let them get on with it. We don't, we don't uh, monitor it. It's always there all the time so they can do what they want they can go for it if they want to and leave it if they don't, if they don't want it, you know, it's just, just what it is, but you must avoid any lick with any flavoring in it, any lick that has any molasses in it. You must avoid all of those licks. Just the basic salt mineral block is all you need. That's usually it. down the cow aisle, not the pink aisle. Yeah, n oftentimes in agricultural shops, you won't see those licks. You'll see all the like, well, in the UK, there'd be various names for them. You'd see all of those licks. Whereas these these blocks you often find in the back, in the actual shed. Those are the ones, and they're cheap. They're not expensive. Um, that 25 kilo block 
God, I think it's about... It's about 12 euros, isn't it? Something yeah, like that, not, 12, 13 12... euros? Yeah, it's not very expensive. And it's that not very will... expensive at all. It's heavy, though. So it is, 25 big. kilos. And you're like that, I try not to put it in the field because it's too heavy. And, um, but, yeah, that... You don't that... put it in the field. <laughs> I do if nobody's around. <laughs> Don't hate me out as if I'm a weakling. <laughs> All right, okay. Let's go. Let's go back to the Phoenix Group. Um, let's share our screen. Uh huh. Boom. There I am again. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, I seem to be everywhere at the moment. Right. Let's carry on. Um, okay. This is this the one you were talking about, Gary? No, that's another one. Uh, that's only minutes old, I think. All right. Okay. So. This, oh, why can't, why is that just go, just... right, in need of guidance, the, depend, we, we will read it and depending on what we see will depend on whether we talk about this publicly because these lives often go out onto YouTube or whether we um, just talk about it privately in the group. So if you're, because you're in this group, you'll see it, but, but quite a lot of these lives go out onto to Oh, publicly as well. In need of guidance. This is my mini. He is 17 years old. He is a rescue who had free roam of several acres and was fed sweet feed. So we know we're not in the UK. For the last two years, because that's what you call it, don't you, in North America. For the last two years, his diet was changed, hay steamed or soaked and low starch forage, triple crown, safe starch. You see? Lots of things going in. No grass, though. On a dry lot, dry lot with a track and his friend. Recent insulin levels were fantastic. Normal value, la, 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 la. This was over a year. Uh, diet is working, so why is he not better? I've never thought the issue could be mechanical until now. Your Facebook page and videos have been a real eye and opener. Thank you. Any suggestions? Right. Well, I think we can all see that there might be a problem here. Uh, all right, Phoenix Warriors, be kind, remember, obviously. Can we just always be kind? Always, always be kind to all our Phoenix members that are coming in and learning. We've always got to think about how it feels when you are in this sort of situation. And let's face it, we see lots. So what do we think? What can you see here? already going on in 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 these feet tell us what you see uh let's see if we can um let's see if we can go through some other pictures as well okay right um that's a close-up remember all those horn tubules i talked about okay so we've got um, we've got very poor balance going on here, but we'll talk about more about this in a minute. This is the first time I've seen this, everyone. I think it's the first time Gary's seen it. So it is. it's going to take a little bit of looking at. <clears throat> okay. Now, isn't this interesting, everyone? These are hind feet, I'm guessing. Look at the difference. Okay. Those are her front. So she's starting to rye. Only because it's, it's, yeah, bless her. We can talk. Oh, yeah. Da, da, da. Walking on stilettos, girl. Walking on stilettos. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, yeah. We've got x rays. Uh-huh. All right. Let's 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 have a little chat about it and then we'll we'll Gary and I'll talk. All right, okay. So we've got this one reminds me of Mouse's feet. Mm-hmm. Mouse was Louise's little pony. The toe is cut. It is. Chop toes. High heels. High heels too high, toes missing, damage frog. I would imagine rotation of P3. Heels too long, of course. Uh, can hooves like, look like cans. Chop toe, extremely high heels. Um, yeah, 
Marianne says chop toes, high heels, poor pony. Yeah. Osteonecrosis. Potentially, right? Now you've let you you saw last night. I know we've just whipped through the x-rays, but now you know those high heels are going to be causing P3 to be potentially on the tip, then we need to we need to uh, we, we in our head we're thinking potentially osteonecrosis which is why we also have to have x-rays of these sorts of things the toe has been rushed and heels are rather high that's right laminitis yes so somebody mentioned laminitis and that hadn't been mentioned before had it now he, here's an interesting thing because this lovely lady has said that she's she thinks that she's got her horse on on the right kind of diet now i'm guessing they're not eating this green grass that's out here one would hope uh, probably not but we'd need to know these are the sorts of things we need to know because definitely definitely apart from all the trim this horse is also pony is also still going through big amounts of inflammation in the feet the trim isn't helping of course it isn't but there are dietary issues here you can see all these gary jump in at any time you can sure. see all of these little rings um and what's happened here <laughs> um uh, it's not funny i'm I, I just am constantly i think gary and i are constantly amazed this is not so, so the laminitis side of it that needs to be ironed out. There is a, there is still an issue there. We still have a problem. It's not. I mean, she's walking, so you know, but there is still a dietary problem. So she's chronic. Now, this removal here of the toe. Now, that why are they doing that? Why do you think that we're removing the toe or this person's removing the toe? And I mean, apart from anything else, has this person completely lost sight? Of what an animal's uh, a horse's foot looks like because surely by looking at that do they think that just whipping off the toe is going to at all bring this foot back to what it should be looking like um why why do you think they're doing that do you know do you have do you do you have you picked that up from it yeah okay so to stop yeah cheating cheating Louise, you're cheating because you're actually an HMB Pro second year student. That's cheating. <laughs> no, I, I don't think, in all fairness, I don't think Louise knows the rules. No, she's, she's not, not here. quiet until we say, OK, students, you may now answer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Louise has got it. She's totally on it. They take, the, they take it off. That's right. They take it off because they are thinking there are lever forces well that's not solved it has it because this has been going on for quite some time and they're trying to get a straight hpa what's that who've passed an access i think we've talked about that before so that's that's that let's go on to the next image all right now we can definitely see can't we now look at this the coronary band is horizontal wouldn't you say yeah now P3 is is will be um, not in a very good position here because this is telling us now we can see the side which telling us that P3 is going to be very much in, angled in a position that's going to mean that it's going to be on its tip and not on the palmar processes because that the the navicular bone will be about here there and this little P3 will be in the, the foot pointing down. And now we have to go and see if we have any osteonecrosis. So like Louise said, do you see this hoof past an axis? Completely lost sight of what a natural foot looks like. Completely and utterly lost sight. And this is a professional who is dealing, I, I assume, who's dealing with this horse's foot. So because got a little bit of flair it had out there, they decided to just chop that off. And that fixes all of this little pony's problems. Walk away and leave this little pony like that. And then you wonder why we start the Phoenix group. We start the Phoenix group because people have got to be aware. All these red rings, that is uh, 
that is um, all cooked down to laminitis. Now, there's a little bit of divergence, but in actual fact, some of the hoof wall is on the ground and then some of it isn't. It's very much a model. So these heels are incredibly high by what looks like probably a good inch and a half. That's just a close-up shot of something they were attempting at the toe, which is to chop it off. Not done anything for this pony at all. Not anything. Now, let's have a look at this. So the peel bulbs are here. Do you see? This is the, the sorry, the coronary band is here, and this is all the heel bulbs. And look how long they've become. And because the heels have been allowed to get so long, they're now starting to rye inwards. So this one is rying inwards from this one. I don't know what the black is on the foot. Do you think that is? I don't know what that black is. Um, oh. And it looks like it's been painted on. And uh, I can tell you anything, if you are, when you watch this, Catherine, I can tell you that nothing that you paint on this horse's foot is going to help it. So it's not balanced. So it's rying in. It's not balanced. Periopal has, has come all the way down here and is peeling up in case you wondered what this is. This is a periopal. The frog um, is, you can see how the this is all frog horn that you can see it's the frog tubules that's what you can see here um and and this is in absolute got absolutely no engagement whatsoever and this sort of frog like this is is heading towards something that we call or could potentially i'm not saying it is definitely but frogs that are like this and potentially start heading towards um, what we call canker. And canker is when the cells become hypertrophic. They don't they don't increase the number of cells they just that are that are in the, the that are in the foot, they just become very much bigger and then they just all start to come out and they're just like they look like massive giant giant papillae is what it looks like. And, and canker is just something that comes from incorrect diet and management. It's it's not just something that a horse gets. But I'm not saying that that's what it is right now, but it's looking, isn't it, to you, Gary? It's starting to look a little bit going that There's direction. There's potential there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the shot from underneath. Um, you can see where the pony's walking around here on the toe, but the frog is so long actual true apex of this pony's frog will be way back here somewhere way back because the actual frog should be back here the true apex is all migrated all forward because that's how horn grows it grows forward you can see the bending in there and you can see there's where where in fact are any landmarks uh don't know how long ago this trim was yes again you can see the problems and that definitely is a hind foot. What a difference. Now, why hasn't he left the hind foot the same as the front foot? You can actually see he's taken the toe off. He's taken the wall off. Look, felt like he needed to do that just to, I say he, could be a she, felt needed to do that. There is a little bit of a wedge in there as well, but you can't see it. Bars left. I don't know how long ago this, the trim was. And then we're back to that. You can see all the very, very red inflammation in this horse's foot. This is a foot in distress. A foot very much in distress. Okay. And again, I'm uh, rying under because it's on stilts. You can see the big rings. That's showing you that there's dietary problems. Now, what do you see here? I want you to look. She's walking and she's she's on, and that looks fantastic, doesn't it? This sandy bit of track here. But I wonder how able this 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 pony is able to get to grass 
because something and all the other things that are added to a diet, something is causing him or her um, to have issues. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to put this back again. Now, I want you to see her walk and imagine that she's walking on these cans. So she's got this very short stride. The whole stride length is short. Stride is when all four feet hit the ground and all four feet come off the ground and she, she moves a whole that's a stride. That's what they call a stride length when all four feet have gone forward. But what you'll notice is that she's not tracking up because she can't, because she's got taking little tiny strides. So let's let's watch her again. Watch her take the little tiny strides. I haven't seen this before. I'm just watching it now. Little tiny strides. And she watch that back leg. Watch this back leg here. Watch it twist. See that twist? She's really not able to do an awful lot. Um, she's doing quite well on these fronts, but she's walking on her tippy toes. Dear of her. Right, now then, what do we see here? So, no surprise to us, is the coronary band, which goes straight across. Remember I said navicular is just underneath there, so it runs straight across here. And you can see that there's P3 palmar processes are way up in the air, so lots of heel needs to be taken off here. And we've got too much toe here, but they don't get it off like that. It's all about getting the balance right. So even though there looks a lot here, just going in and chopping it off in this direction is never the way to do it. It's always about excavating the sole first. And in fact, it did look like there was a bit of compaction, but it did look like that would come away quite easily. <clears throat> But what we see here is, do you remember last night I was talking about the terminal arch? Look how close this all is now. So we've got osteonecrosis here. And we're at that point now where we, if we tip over from here, we could be going into comfort issues. So obviously the trim needs to be sorted out because that's what's causing this bit. And the separation is being caused by the laminitis. So both of those things have to be sorted out. Here's the other foot. And you can see that big ski tip. You see how it's going up in the air right now? That indicates to me that this horse at some point was even further up because the ski tip doesn't go up. The ski tip will um, form like that. And then and then as the heels come down, that ski tip looks like it's going up, right? So believe it or not, I think that pony's been even further over, knuckled over, because they can come in and it can knuckle over. So I think that, I think probably what the pony is right now is probably better than it was before. Um, what a mess. You've got to be careful here because actually, you know, they've measured depth here, but but look at the depth under here. You know, you have to be very, this is a tricky trim. This is a tricky trim. And again, the only thing that can guide you is the hard sole plane. You've got to be very, very careful here. Look at all this mass down here. So it needs to come across here, not chopped off there. This is a trim that, that needs a professional's, somebody who knows the natural foot. And you can see here, can't you? That's, that's, just see that faint line. Don't see any ring bone. So that's a good thing. I don't see any side bone particularly. That's a saving grace. Um, let's go back to the other one. Let's look at that. <clears throat> nope. So this is about getting that trim right. So I'd be really interested to find out what the what what was said, you know, with the vet and the farrier, because you know they've they've definitely definitely got this uh, pony into a very bad seriously bad situation so if you're watching what we need to do here is you need to have a very um very good trim but by somebody who kind of knows how to follow that hard soul plane yeah anybody got any 
comments on that? Um, there was a lady that put up a post, uh, uh, sorry, a comment, um, uh, Vivian. Would you lower the heels to the hard cell plane in one trim? Absolutely. There is, there is so much misunderstanding. That hoof is in such a dire situation right now. Do we think that taking the heel down just a little bit and often is going to make any difference? Oh, my God, a little bit of tension in the back of the foot is the least of this pony's problem. The least. Mm. This is a I dire get... situation. Oh, I've closed. The... Why did I close that? What did it? Um, um... So it's it's yes. Um, and I have to say that uh, on the occasions that we have had to do this, um, and in some cases, we are taking inches off the back of the foot at a time. Yes, the horse feels different afterwards, but usually after a few hours, they are much more comfortable. And also, don't forget that when we do take these feet and make them in a more comfortable position, it's not just the feet that have got to adapt all of their muscles and the way that they've moved constantly for the last God knows how long that it took to get into this state. The whole body has got to readapt. But you'll find... But it really does it really quickly. Mm, it does it really quickly. It does really quickly. I just want to just illustrate what Gary's saying there by looking at this X-ray. The deep digital flexor tenon, you can just kind of see it. It's coming down and it's it's under here. Now it shouldn't be like this, right? It's at, it's it's it places between between these palmar processes. It comes in and it's it roots itself to under here. And it's it's in crisis because look how everything is, is squashed. The digital cushion is squashed, everything is squashed in here, and the and the the bit that's going to cause this horse's um uh you know that, that that could shorten this horse's life severely is this bit here so it's incredibly important that you get p3 into the position it needs to be as fast as possible as yeah. fast as possible and the rest of it will just sort itself out you're you know a little bit of of aching with the the soft tissues and it passes very quickly it doesn't stop them walking. It just passes very quickly. Compared to this, you, you've got to get them off this. This is this is vital. So, yeah, that was a good question, and it and I'm afraid it pops up a lot. That it uh, does. But you 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 can't wait. And and also, if you only take a small if if you only take a small amount down or a certain amount down, how much is enough? right? How much do you know is enough? How can you gauge that? And so you go, uh, you, you can't. So you have to be guided by that hard sole plane. But the problem that you have that with a foot like this is that you'll get compaction. Now, nerdy Lindsay has got something to show you. I didn't know this was coming up tonight, by the way. Um, I didn't. But I might as well show you this while we're at it. Okay, so this. Uh, oh, it's got a download from iCloud. I'm just downloading it. Okay. Gary, do you want to read some of the comments while I'm doing that? Yeah, sure. Um, so Vivian asked another question. So um, uh, would you recommend a body workout after such a trim? Now, um, body work can be really helpful. But what this pony needs, once that trim is correct, the pony needs to move. What it needs is physio. And guess what? He can do that himself. And then once everything has settled down, and everything is pretty much back to normal, give it a few weeks, and then if need be, then get maybe some body work. But there's, there's no point in bringing body work in until the body has resettled. The feet are so important. If you can't have a, a, 
efficient natural balance from the feet how has the rest of the body got any chance at all at being right it can't the feet are so important okay so i'm going to share with you this right take a take a look at this pony uh, where's it gone no i don't i don't suggest that people put halters on and encourage horses to walk like this just just because they're struggling okay that's my voice you can hear there all right so Let's have another little look here at that. There you go. And you see this? Yeah. You see it's starting to rye like the other foot because that's what it yeah. does when it just gets so long in the end, everything just goes up in and just starts rolling itself over these are the back feet um yeah that's another front foot that's another one yeah you can see and you can see the previous hoof care similar thing where they'd just taken off nibbled off the toe what what in their mind thinks that leaving an animal with a foot like this is the right thing to do. Uh, is that it? Is that it? Have I done? Have I got all the pictures yet? Oh, here we go. So this, this is, uh, let me just, um, so that is her coronary band. And that's my thumb, right? And so my bit of thumb is about an inch, I'd say. It normally is, isn't it? If you go from there to there, it's roughly about mm -hmm. an inch. So let's go from there to there. I know that I've not got my thumb in the right. You can't properly see it. But let's just say, let's give it benefit of the doubt. One. Two. Three, four, roughly, four inches. That's pretty bad, isn't it? And um, you can see here is just a black hole, the black hole of Calcutta. There's literally just a black, mushy mess in there. So this horse was laminitic. All right, let me just stop sharing screen uh i'm pretty sure i've got um uh, if i think i might have a video of that um trisha says the ddft doesn't get contracted from being in that position it doesn't need time to stretch yeah it does it it, it does need time to stretch but it stretches really quick it's not contracted like a we see um horses you do see horses with very contracted tendons but that's not really what's going on here and oftentimes when you see a horse that's got a contracted tent well not oftentimes the, the 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 actual heel can't get itself on the ground at all she's not got a problem with getting her heel down it's just a very long heel um all I can say to you is that it doesn't cause them a problem. And it DDFT doesn't. and DDFT is in dire straits right now with the digital cushion, DDFT, all the ligaments in the foot, everything is in dire straits. Dire straits. Everything anyway. in the back of the foot is in unnatural angles. It's everything is in the wrong position doing the wrong thing. The foot is not functioning as it should. So leaving it where it is, 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 is not going to help. 
everything has got to be done to make that horse get that that foot back into a more natural position and as quickly as possible fast fast there is no point in waiting no point and and all the ones that we've done the um the the change they notice of course they are but the way that they they react is almost instant relief almost instant relief isn't it lens oh god yeah it's yeah. almost instant I mean, they're, relief they're not, and it's almost yeah. uh, sometimes you can feel that their muscles up further up in the body you can see them changing and they think oh my god and it's a bit like us when we do some exercise that we're not used to doing and we get hot spots in our body and stuff like that because they're having to move in a completely different way because they've been put in that position it's it's no. it's hard it's hard no 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 definitely not no definitely not um tendons aren't torn the, the unless uh, the and also when, ra tendons, when race what? when race horses are running and they snap a tendon that's because they put so much extra force that that tendon can't do that extra stretch mm. okay this tendon absolutely is in a or an, in an already very difficult position when the heels go down i don't know i don't know why people think that the tendon suddenly is going to get stretched because the tendon still in the same position under p3 the heels have been taken down that the, all that's happened is that p3 is now like this with the t with the ddft squashed as it does that the ddft relaxes and is able to is able to 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 now sit normally in the back of the foot we haven't we haven't lengthened it in any way because all we've done is allowed to stop it from being squashed just because we've lowered those heels doesn't mean to say we've suddenly put we've suddenly put extra stretch onto the ddft i probably not explained that properly but do you understand what i'm saying you've not suddenly given it extra length that it needs to stretch it's not going to happen it just is putting it in a better position in the position that it was designed to be in so it's not going to it's not going to tear because it's not suddenly being in a stretched position it's not going to tear it's a it's a myth that people think that doing that is going to cause problems and it's i think it's come from the world of, of horses that actually genuinely do have contracted tendons um but that's not what's going on here this tendon isn't contracted this tendon is just in the very bad position it's not in a very good position and so putting it back in the right position i think i think yeah I, th I think we get very confused about all of that but in actual fact it's it, where it is sat in the back of the pedal bone right now it is being literally squashed into the navicular bone the navicular bone can't move all of it is absolutely shoved together like this and the ddft and nothing is moving it needs to get itself going again everything needs to move and it needs to do it very quickly let me just show you this mm -mm. Oh, where have I, what have i done with it this is actually running off my screen flow so i'm not entirely sure whether you'll hear it can you hear that can't hear anything yet can you hear it no okay that's because it's playing off my screen flow let me just you talk you, you go through some of those comments and i'll see if i can sure. find it um so trisha ann said just trying to figure out why my soon-to-be former trimmer <laughs> is doing <laughs> gradual trims um and it is because of that myth they think that that it, it needs to be done gradually because they don't understand it's because they don't understand the biology of the foot yeah. and they're, they're frightened and i suppose you could say that they're conflicted within their thoughts yeah. <laughs> okay uh, which, i found which, which, it which which is which is um yes um a little worrying all right here we go 
Can you see that now? Now tell me if you can hear this. You hear that? Mm, no. I wonder why you can't hear that this time. Because we, we could I heard hear it. Very faintly, but you had you had maximum volume in there. So um try it again. Oh no, I can. Yes, there you go. And I've also got um, I've also got another picture. Here we go. Have a look at this. This is this is good for you. You'll 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 get this. This is excellent to help you see stuff. Okay. Yes, a happy ending. So this is the transition with the feet. Now you go down as far as you can. Can you see um, here? Do you see all of this red? So this freaks people out a lot of the time. Um, but in fact, it's, this, is, this is compacted soul and that redness has come down and you can see gradually the red begins to dissipate as you go down, you can see. So that is in just a very few short months. So you can see here in June, the heels are pretty much where they need to be. In March, they're pretty much where they need to, well, they're nearly there. In January to March, we brought them back as far as we could. When I say as far as we could, it's all determined on, on what we see in the foot. We've got to be careful, you see, because there are issues with P3 being in a very difficult position as well. So... Yeah, it's not something that we can just teach you. It's something that you learn. This sort of very difficult, complex kind of trimming is something that our pros learn. It's, it's, yeah, you can see here, look at the difference. Look at the difference between this heel and this heel. So it's highly possible. It just means you, you really just have to kind of know what you're doing. There you go. So that is a similar example to what we've got right now. So it needs to be, they need to get at it, but they need somebody. Oh, she's here. Hello, Catherine. Oh, Catherine. Hi. Yes. So where are you located, Catherine? Where, where, are, where are you? We've got to do Deborah's. We must whiz down to Deborah's because we promised her we would. Um, hi, where are you located? Tell us where you're located. And don't forget, if you've watched, missed it, go back and have a look. So there, there is definitely hope. You've got diet and management issues, still, management, diet issues still going on there. So my advice is to strip everything out of that diet. Just mix meadow hay. Don't give her anything else right now. And don't make sure she doesn't get any nibbles of grass, anything like that. And then we've got to get those heels sorted out. So she's in Alabama in Alabama. I don't know anybody in Alabama. Um, right, Catherine, to, to help yourself and help your pony, the fastest way to do that is to get on the challenge, get on the 15 day challenge, and then get on, if you're not already on it, and then get on the 10 day challenge, because it will teach you everything you need to know. And then it will, you will be able to help your pony more because when you get the right person to come and help you to start trimming you'll know what needs to be done. I think that your pony doesn't have as much compaction as the pony I was just showing you there in fact I think that with a good bit of knife work you're probably able to find quite a bit of that 
already. We've got to be very cognizant of the fact that P3 still has got depth in some areas, but not others. And so it's a very confused foot. Um, what exactly is mixed meadow hay? It's only soaked hay is a he, uh, no grass. Um, so mixed meadow hay is just mixed hay. What kind of hay have you got? What's in your hay? Is What species is in your hay? Do you know if there's any rye in your hay? And how long have you had him? Tell us those things. We'll see you again tomorrow evening or tomorrow day. No, no, whatever it is for you. Uh, sorry, again, it was a bit bitty. We'll see you then. Bye bye. Take care.